Oh my god. I was dreaming something really, really rude. Oh. You know it catch the bus and stuff, right? Well, in this dream I was waiting for the bus at my stop, you know? Somewhere, you know? And, um... The bus went right past me. I'm like, hey, wait. And and one of the children on the city bus said, hey, you missed somebody. And, and I was like trying to catch up. And I hear the bus driver say, uh, not my problem. Time's up. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me. And then he drives off. And that was like the last stop for the hour. Like it was like close to six thirty. And I would have been, str and I was stranded there. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? That was really rude in my dream. Like seriously. <laughs> Oh my god, did I dream weird stuff, guys. If that would actually happen, I would report that person and and request for them to get fired because that is n uncalled for. Seriously. But yeah, um, it's close to 11 o'clock now. I'm going to get dressed, go to the bathroom, get dressed, and uh, go to the cafe, get my soup, and get my coffee over at the gas station. Alrighty. God, I can't believe that dream. Kind of pissed me off. <laughs> All right. I was up at five, half to had a pee too, and then I went back to sleep. I almost got in my full boob on that previous clip oops but yeah i'm gonna head out now all right i'll put you on the tripod here and do a fast speed video so i'll try not to be long <clears throat> i'm farting too okay I'm hot, you guys. I had to open up a window. <laughs> Got my chicken dumpling. Here's um, and I got my Masha Java. The chicken dumpling soup was four seventy five. The two Masha Javas six thirty three. So, Just listen to me. Jesus. Fine. What is it? What do you, what do you need?
Thanks. I know I am. I never told you this before, but you have been an amazing brother. The best. Like, even right now, I know that you don't want to talk, but you're listening to me anyway because you know that it's important to me. And you've always been that way. You are patient. Bring the wine. All right, so remember when I said I had something big to tell my audience, something yeah. that we wanted to talk about? Yeah. All right, so here it is, the big news. Tina and I have been sober, completely straight edge for the last three weeks. No oh. alcohol, no weed, no edibles, nothing. A while? Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it? I don't drink either. Do you want mine? <laughs> There's always a gray area in every situation. Dad. Fantastic. James tries to explore logic. Fantastic. What does that even mean? What's she doing now? As if she weren't contrary enough. She has to argue with the report of the draconian security measures by the school. Assisted by you. Spend a day seeing what I do. You'd ask for more. Hi guys, I will be leaving soon um, for physical therapy. We got a lot of trucks down there. It's like Spectrum. Yeah, uh, yeah, Spectrum. Two Spectrum trucks. Somebody told me on the bus that um, if my Spectrum internet gets too high in price for me, I should try that. TDS internet service is cheaper. So no to dad to tell no to me to tell dad, excuse me, about that, alright? So I don't know if there's a a thing about filming and physical therapy, but if I happen to do so I do so like that one time where she got me early and yeah. I filmed it the very first day, just like 42 seconds worth, but yeah. All right, so I will be leaving soon for that.
So yeah, I'm all ready to go now. Hopefully, I need to catch the bus. I'll just walk slow. It's a nice area here. Nice clinic. 
I need to picture this being like a hotel too. <laughs> the rooms are big enough. Yeah. Hi. It's like my snacks. My snacks are above the, the fridge uh, in my apartment. But my cat goes in that cupboard, he gets on the counter, gets on top of the fridge and uses his car, <coughs> opens the cupboard. So where I had my snacks, I have moved above the sink because he can't get there. So. Mm. And I can't see putting my cat down. I love my cat too much. I have cat fever. I keep watching these videos on Facebook. Yeah, and how to go, Wants to eat fever. He's been like lumberjacking it up all year. Yeah, how how the kittens go? Meow. I no, go. I got a cat one time. Uh, my, uh, meow. There was a hole in my lawn, Fourth Street, and that stupid thing would hide in the hole till I came out, and it wouldn't come out. It would only come out eating my litter box. Muscle. And I got it from the man side, but it was just not saying it was the stupidest cat, but we just didn't see eye to eye. So yeah, when I play my PS5, it kind of loud. So.
you go to South Side? Yeah. You're lucky you can have my mom art. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mom, whatever you did to Adam today, he's like totally catatonic, so I hope that's what you were going for. Yeah, well, my teaching methods are not open for discussion. What? For your friend. The utility bill is all she needs to enroll in school. And she's off the streets, gets free food, can play with the medicine ball. You weren't interested in any of it yourself. Twenty-three. B three. I twenty-one. Ten thirty-eight. B twelve. G fifty-five. G forty-nine. O sixty-nine. farther for rewards take shot great shot No. 
Pirates are. Oh, I was baptized. <laughs> that was my thing. Wait, you you seen Proud? I didn't see that. Um, any any time you wanna talk about? Oh, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. wrong and I am sorry this this the whole sleeping thing it matters a lot you were right thank you I, mean, I, I didn't try hard enough to understand where you're coming from well it's really hard if you haven't been there all the babies get when they're retired oh I know because because I was talking to a friend and she was telling me stories it's, the deep knee bends and blow dryers and the crazy length she went through to get a baby to go to bed. Oh, I've been there. I bet. <laughs> social life becomes such a hot topic around here. I just tried to live vicariously. Did you and Rebecca go out? That's uh, kind of on hold. I had an EMG test. No, just clean in. Oh. I-29. Because I heard this rumor that... G-58. I'm not quite. I-20. B2. G54. Round over. Take my shower as you've seen. Ooh, I think I see the moon above the reflection of my door. See? Ooh. Right there. Pretty. The 
those are my lights Yeah, I'm going to get ready for bed, like take my pills. <sighs> I'm tired for a while now, so see you later. Yes, Mom, you know the rules. No noises out there except for my computer. It'll shut off after two minutes of inactivity. And yes, you hug and kiss my baby kitty. Like there's no tomorrow. Hug her and kiss her. Kiss her and hug her. Poke her little on her little pink nose. Go beep, beep, beep. Like that. And remind her that her mommy Nora loves her and misses her, okay? Alright, I love my baby kitty. My fur baby. Soft as a cotton ball. and told her that Adoptions with Love had no record of any adoption. To this, of course, Alexis changed her story. She told officers that she did contact Adoptions with Love, who then provided her a list of other adoption agencies. Through that list, she came in contact with a woman named Janet Dunn, who facilitated the adoption to an unidentified couple. She said that she met with Janet in West Denver on May 4th, but couldn't specify an exact location. Alexis did not know the name of the agency that Janet worked for, nor did she have any contact information for her. All resident in the vicinity walked into the police station to report his wife gone. When he reported his wife missing, he told the police she had a history of depression, addiction, and self-harm, hinting that she may have committed suicide. He said she left without her keys, handbag, cell phone, and bank cards. He returned a few days later and told the police that someone had placed his wife's prescription glasses and wedding ring in their letterbox. The twist. The detectives sat down with Jason, who had piqued their interest, and were unprepared by what they were about to learn. For reasons unknown, Jason confessed to killing his wife.
tie around his arm tight enough. So instead, he used some webbing from his kit that seemed to do the trick. With a tourniquet ready, he went to start cutting, but just couldn't get past the mental block. Day three, Aaron's other attempts to escape had so far failed, and his mind turned back to amputation. As he mused on it, he realized that he wasn't confident in the tourniquet he had created, so he created something else. Taking the insulation from his camelback, Aaron found that it was a perfect candidate and used it instead. Then, he took his long knife, the one he'd been using to stab the rock, and tried to cut his arm. Nothing. Nothing. 